Well, summer is here and uh, love is in the air, but that might be cause for parents concerned about how to approach that topic with their kids. And how do you counteract some mixed messages from celebrity couples in the news lately? Joining us with some advice, welcome certified sex therapist Emily Diala. Also, Thank if you. you have general relationship questions for Emily, please call us now at 713-284-1055. 713-284-1055. Okay, now we can properly welcome her to the show. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, this is like that forever topic that parents yes. struggle with. However, we've seen kind of that envelope get pushed further and further and further. We just saw that scene from Greece right. where back then you just didn't do that. Well, the truth is it should be a forever topic because it should start the conversation from, you know, diapers to dating is a great name and there's a book out there called that and it's got great advice for parents. But basically the conversation should start from the very beginning with, you know, using appropriate names for body parts to having ongoing discussion and dialogue, being willing to answer questions when the kids come, giving them information and not waiting for the questions to come. It's just an important part of, you know, life transition. Yeah. Now, this is a, something that's happened for many, many years where parents will say, oftentimes in a very loud voice, it is not for schools to teach my kids about sex. Uh, I'm going to do that. Now, I'm, I want to ask the audience here. How many of you did your parents sit you down and have that intelligent conversation with you? Wow. Oh, no. Oh, oh, <laughs> Two people. And, and so that's where a big part of the problem comes in. It's a in. huge part. Yeah, and I think there's room for the schools to do education, but parents need to have dialogue with their children as well. It's so important that they get it from both yeah, angles because they're not going to get all the information from one or the other. Yeah, otherwise it comes from friends who have some myths about things. Friends. And it comes from, like, especially today, we're such a media savvy society, right. celebrity couples. You know, for example, Kim Kardashian and Kanye West, mm -hmm. it's like first comes love, then comes baby. What about marriage? That's a big maybe. Maybe. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, you know, um, and, and mm -hmm. sometimes kids look and say, well, they did it and had their baby and they mm -hmm. were in love. Why can't we? Well, I think it's a good segue to open up the dialogue to different relationship structures, different family structures. I mean, we are no longer in a society where it's just one man, one woman married all of the time. I mean, there are gay couples having children. There are single women, single men adopting. And so it's just important to have that conversation with your kids so they know that, you know, there's very little normal anymore. Yeah. And that's okay. Yeah. It's, I think it's a good thing. The difference is um, with a couple like, let's say, Kanye and, and Kim or uh, Natalie Portman and her her husband and Halle Berry who's engaged mm -hmm. uh, but pregnant right now yeah. so the difference with them is when you have 70 million dollars you can deal with consequences <laughs> or you can deal with responsibility right, right. You can deal with responsibility and that's that lesson of love does not necessarily conquer all no not necessarily and yes I think you know it's good to show that these women are empowered in a lot of ways they're making these decisions for themselves but it's important to reality check a little bit as well and say you know they may have all of these resources at their disposal you may not Here's going to be the consequences for you if you're in this situation. Yeah. So if any of those people it are your teenagers, like role models, you might want to have them watch that te that show Teen Mom uh, is it on MTV. <laughs> wow. Wow is right. <laughs> but at the yeah. same time, you know, that they show the hardships, like, you know, most of mm -hmm. those couples don't stay together and it's like right. what it really takes money-wise. Uh, at the same time, they've become celebrities. They have, you know. Yes, it does show the hardships, but it's glamorized as well. I mean, like we were discussing before the show, they're on People magazine. They have, you know, cameras around them all the time. And <laughs> so and so you know, arrested again. Right, you know? <laughs> yeah. And, you know, kids see that and they like, you know, it's cool that someone's getting all that attention, but that's just not the reality for most teen parents yeah. at and all. You say attention and love. You know, with the issue of teen pregnancy, which is, you know, again, been a, an issue mm -hmm. for quite some time. Well, it used to be if you got married by at 12, back in like the 1700s, <laughs> yeah. you got married at 12, there was no problem with teen pregnancy because you weren't even a teen yet. Right, right. right. But, <laughs> but now we're living longer, waiting longer to, to get mm -hmm. married. But um, that attention thing, we have to separate 
uh, whether it's something that just happens because you're in love with somebody and you weren't careful, or right. if you, on purpose, and that's the thing that's, I think, harder to address, yeah. needed someone to love you back. Exactly, and that's really where it comes from the parents, because the truth is, a lot of teens that get pregnant, sure, there's a large cohort that is just a simple mistake, you know, but a lot of them are seeking attention from their partners and thinking that they can have something special with them and that that's going to tie them down and, you know, give them that relationship that maybe they weren't getting at home. Yeah, yeah. we certainly know that when you're a teen parent, you're not a bad person. I want to make that no, very clear. Of course but not. the odds are stacked against you of not they completing are. school, not having the jobs mm -hmm, that you need to take mm -hmm. care of those kids. There's a campaign that they did in Chicago recently, the Chicago Health Department, because, you know, it was out of control, the number of, of uh, yeah. teen uh, pregnancies. And they said, we have to get people's attention. What they wanted boys to know is that that girl's not the only one who gets pregnant. So if you take a look at this picture, it's really unsettling because they're showing boys who look like they're pregnant. And their point was to say, get the attention here. Just because she may be pregnant, young men, doesn't mean that right. you aren't also. Yes. Yes. So good message or if it I gets think, the attention and to open up a dialogue? Right. I think it's it's effective in that it gets people's attention. And I think the research has shown that teen pregnancies have gone down a little bit mm -hmm. since that ad ran. And there was a similar campaign a few years ago in Milwaukee that had similar results. But the truth is we got to get them earlier and we need to get the discussion happening sooner because these ads aren't going to last forever and eventually they'll go away and teens will be teens again. Yeah. And they're not, you know, their brains just aren't fully developed. They're, they don't have the capacity to make you know decisions the way that adults do and so again it's just, it just goes back to the what we we're discussing in the beginning and that you have to have the conversations with them those kinds of ads are effective if they're followed up by conversation the ads alone not so much yeah all right this time of year um, you know we have a lot of graduations kids are heading off to college and I remember my mom saying oh you're not staying in a dorm they're too close so I was like in an apartment where I had, I, just, I had to go to an apartment where I had to take like five bus transfers to get to UT. You know? She's like, that way if a boy wants to come over, he's committed. <laughs> so anyway, uh, we're going to talk more about kind of those separation issues. Like one of yeah. them is kids who graduate, go to separate colleges. They think, oh, we'll be in love forever. All yeah. know it. And so we're going to ask you about that question okay. in a minute. But Emily is also taking your calls. If you have a relationship question, call us now at 713-284-1055. 713-284-1055. And Emily will try to guide you in the right direction. And later, our correspondent, Courtney Perna, goes back to her investigative reporter roots. She's helping to save you and those you love from fashion disasters. And Courtney, what are you talking about? Well, Deborah, it's a cover-up that's been going on for a long time, but I'm here to expose the truth. With lingerie this cute, why wouldn't you want to show it off? We'll look at some sophisticated ways to do just that. Plus, I'm uncovering what you normally cover up, shapewear, but this one is designed to keep you cool. I've got the details 